See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, on this day we celebrate the memorial of St. Lawrence Bredinsky. He was actually a Capuchin monk, and uh, he prayed a lot for the church, and he gave his soul for the faith. He's a doctor of the church. We ask for his intercession on this day. To worthily celebrate this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our things and ask God for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the glory of your name and the salvation of souls, bestowed on the priest St. Lawrence of Bredinsky a spirit of counsel and fortitude, grant to pray that in the same spirit we may know what must be done and through his intercession bring it to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The children of Israel set out from Elam and came into the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt, here in the desert, the whole assembly of the children of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The children of Israel said to them, would that we have died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread? But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain bread down from heaven upon you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion Thus I will test them and see whether they follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, however, when they prepare what they bring in, let it be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole congregation of the children of Israel, Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. When Aaron announced this to the whole assembly of Israel, they turned toward the desert, and lo, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the grumbling of the children of Israel. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord am your God. In the evening, quail came down and covered the camp. And in the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, 
the children of Israel asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. They tempted God in their hearts by demanding the food they craved. Yes, they spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the desert? Yet He commanded the skies above the doors of heaven He opened. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance. He stirred up the east wind in the heavens, and by his power brought on the south wind. As he rained meat upon them like dust, and like the sand of the sea, winged fowl, which fell in the midst of their camp, round about their tents. To Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, the seed fell on the path, and, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, but some seed fell on the rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. A practical question, dear friends. Do we, or do I, at some point, behave like the people of Israel? My two hands are up. The point being, as human beings, human memory is always selective of, of what it chooses to remember sometimes. When things are going good, when things are going bad, and the tendency amongst us sometimes is to compare things that were better in the past compared to what we do not like in the present. In the story of today, we've been reading from the book of Exodus, and we've been seeing the hand of God in the life of the people of God. God continues to show that God is the shepherd of Israel, 
taking them out of bondage, leading them to safety, providing food for them. But before them, they grumbled. Yesterday, they grumbled against Moses. Today, they grumbled. Why would you bring us to this place? But all the Lord required of the people of God was just a sense of gratitude. That in all circumstances, we should always give thanks. And when you talk about thanksgiving or gratitude, isn't that the meaning of our Eucharist? It means thanksgiving. And God continues in Jesus Christ to sustain us, body and soul, in what we come every day to celebrate, thanksgiving, to say thank you to God, always. That is what we do here. In our gospel reading of today, the parable is more about God than us. That sometimes our human disposition may want to choke the word of God we have received. But ultimately, God is the one that makes the seed of the word that we have heard to sow either hundredfold, sixtyfold, or thirtyfold. But we are called to have an attitudinal disposition that would allow the word of God to grow in us. You remember yesterday, Jesus said, Everyone that will do the will of my Father is my brother and my sister. Everyone who aligns his or her will with the will of God becomes the family of God. And by the virtue of our baptism, we belong to that family. What happens in the family? We have good meals together. We relate very well together. And the meal as Christians that we have is the meal of the Eucharist so that we become what we receive and in turn we can become source of sustenance to others. And so the call for you and I is to have a good attitudinal disposition to the Word of God, both the one spoken at this table and what happens there. The Eucharist means things given. That is what is lacking in the first reading of today. Quickly, they forgot that God took them away from Egypt. God took them to the desert. God provided for them. But it is in our nature to always grumble as human beings. But as Christians, we are called to be like St. Paul. When he was advising the people of Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In all circumstances, good or bad, let us always give thanks because this is the will of God for us. Let us rise. We turn now to God, the giver of all good things, to present our petitions. For the church on our journey of faith, May God's word guide and nourish her. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations and communities called to shepherd God's people, may the Spirit of the Lord lead them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who hunger and those who produce the harvest, let us pray to the Lord. For our own faith community, may God bless our gathering this day to be fed in word and sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. For Daniel Wesolowski and Richard Sedikowski, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, called home at the end of their faith journey. Let us pray to the Lord. In silence, dear friends, let us have our own personal intentions. We ask Mary, our mother, to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed as thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
pray for all sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God, hear our prayers this day as you lead us on on our journey to your eternal presence. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice, that it, pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, we in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law. Accept to pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gift of Hebel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through Him, with great goodness, you formed each anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we will extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, it took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the challenge of salvation, giving thanks that you have held those worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Michael our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Lawrence of Bredinci, St. Gregory the Great, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be cohorts to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive all our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace.
peace and unity in accordance with your will will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. and act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have endured with heavenly mysteries to pass on from our ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. May you have a blessed day.